But just before Christmas in the old North Pole, all of the reindeer came down with the cold. Rudy said to Santa, can't make it this time. This old nose ain't got the same shine. Santa cried in misery, but all these kids are counting on me. Rudy said, we won't fail. This year's Santa will Hey everyone, my name is Kelly Prescott and I've had the pleasure of touring across North America along with some great entertainers on the Canadian Pacific Railway holiday train. As you can see, it's the coolest rolling fundraiser in the world. This railway life is in my blood. Two of my great grandfathers, my grandfather and my parents have all worked for Canadian Pacific Railway. The holiday train has been running since 1999, raising money, food, and awareness for those in need. To date, more than $2.4 million and 584 tons of food have been distributed to North American food banks. Join me on board where you'll meet some fabulous musicians such as Patricia Conroy, Wayne Steele, Wayne Rostad, the Anna Sisters, Amanda Stott, the Moffats, John Cowan, Beverly Mahood, and Tracy Brown. Well, the holiday train is about to leave the station, so all aboard! I'm Nancy and I am the director here at the Lanark County Food Bank. Last year, uh, the holiday train came to Almont and Carleton Place and uh, the result of them coming was 10,000 pounds of food and $10,000 in cash for the Lanark County Food Bank, which was absolutely wonderful. Now normally what we collect at Christmas time lasts us till March. Because of the holiday train, we're still using the food three and four months after that. So that's how helpful the food train was. I can't even put into words what a great help the holiday train was. And I'm sure all the food banks would say the same thing. So we'd, we'd love to have them back. Not just for what they did for the food bank, uh, the townspeople just loved going to see it. Being a part of it. The holiday train journey actually begins 10 months before departure, right here in beautiful Calgary, Alberta, at the CPR head office. Here's Mark Sealand, Director of Public Affairs, to tell you more. Canadian Pacific Railway and its 15,000 employees uh, bring the holiday train to about 100 uh, or more communities in Canada and the United States. Uh, this has obviously developed quite vastly from the original project in 1999, where we had 14 stops uh, only in Canadian cities. It takes uh, several hundred 
Canadian Pacific employees to put this, uh, this project together from people in the shops, designing and decorating the light schemes, uh, people in, in operations design and, and our field operations groups to, uh, to plan the scheduling, manage our other trains around this, uh, logistics to have uh, the train arrive at a publicly convenient place uh, in hours that are obviously dark and will highlight the lights. Uh, we have Canadian Pacific Railway Police Service, uh, rail traffic controllers, uh, mechanical staff that uh, ensure the operation of the train uh, continues through in its spectacular format. Well, the holiday train really has come a long way in more ways than distance. Um, initially, there was uh, barely any entertainment, and as time went on, they plunked some speakers right on the floor of the boxcar, and a couple of parkan lights shining in like this. And uh, we were playing to karaoke tracks, basically. We had a CD in the back and we'd sing along to that because it was thought that the challenge of playing in the cold was too much, it just wouldn't work. The folks at CPR came to me and said, would you be interested in producing the train? I was absolutely honored. And I said, yes, on two conditions. Can we play our music live? Because I believe that audience standing out there in the cold deserves that kind of an effort. And secondly, can I step off of the stage and to fulfill my role as a producer, I need to look at the big picture, stand out there and see what's going on. How's it sounding? What's the crowd experiencing? And uh, they said, yeah, you can do both those things if you want to. And I'll tell you, it's been the best job I've ever had in my life. Dwayne Steele's another great uh, performer we've had on the train. I first met Dwayne in Nashville where he was uh, recording and I was just blown away by his pure country style. Uh, we became good friends and songwriting partners. In fact, this song here was created right on the holiday train. Uh, we were somewhere in the Rocky Mountains and I had this idea and I went to Dwayne's room and uh, we started working on it. He jumped on it right away and uh, it, it was so cool. And once again, he's the kind of guy that uh, just loves to get out and meet the people in the crowd, sign his autographs and uh, Dwayne Steele is the real deal.
Hello, I'm Kevin Lepresti, electrical mechanical specialist with the Canadian Pacific Railway. Every year I design the layout of the Canadian and U.S. holiday trains. Uh, this is a big project and we um, encompasses approximately 70 days from the start to finish, um, early October to December when the, the trains roll out of Montreal and, and St. Paul. First of all, we, uh, we start with a layout of the trains we decide on, the makeup of the trains, the number of cars, generators, placement of the generator set, the stage car, any special modifications required, and then the, uh, the business cars, the number of business cars we're going to utilize in, in the trains, the Canadian train, and the U.S. trains. Hi, my name is Ron Pierce. I'm manager of operations, Saratoga, New York, with Canadian Pacific Railway. I'm here in Montreal with some of the past presidents of CPR. I'm with field operations and basically manage our trains and their over-the-road uh, functions. And with the holiday train, I work, uh, verify the schedule and uh, make sure it gets across uh, the Northeast US, New York and Pennsylvania in a timely fashion. Well, the holiday train uh, means to me and my fellow American employees a way to give back to our communities that uh, support us throughout the year by uh, bringing in donations to the local food banks and helping people that uh, could use a little extra hand at the holiday time. Well, we've had uh, the pleasure of working with some great entertainers on the train. Um, Wayne Rostad, him and I used to be in a band back in the uh, late 70s, a six-piece band. I think we were making like 75 bucks a week, and uh, he went on to become uh, a national TV star, uh, hosting his own series, which is called On the Road Again, and he's had up to a million people a week watching him. And uh, folks on the, on the tracks couldn't wait to meet Wayne. Uh, he was great. He'd get out into the audience and sign autographs after, and uh, it was marvelous to work with him. People who come to our event are encouraged to bring uh, non-perishable food items. Um, all of the donations, I might say too, uh, stay in the community it's collected in. So the wonderful thing is that community donates and looks after its own. It's a wonderful way to celebrate Christmas. Well, the purpose of the holiday train, I mean, is to give back to the communities through which CPR operates. It's as simple as that. And to involve its employees in a worthy cause. And they're all involved. It's a great participation on behalf of CPR's employees. We pull in with the train. People show up. It's this wonderful gathering of communities. And they're there with foodstuffs in hand, children in arms, cash in hand, all to help their own communities. The money collected in each community stays there. So it's a great way to say Merry Christmas to your own community. So what we ask people to do is to bundle up, take the kids, and uh, bring some non-perishable food items. If you wish, bring a cash donation. Come say hello to Santa Claus and come and see this spectacular train. Christmas on the CBR. Amanda Stott is an amazing singer. I mean, she's uh, joined us several times on the train, and she's a great team player and a gracious host, as you can see. You can also tell that she's from the new generation. We were uh, rehearsing Super Tramp's song, Give a Little Bit for a performance, and uh, check out what she said. Who's Super Tramp? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I got a call one day from uh, Warner Music and uh, they said that they had uh, an artist from the West Coast they were working with and they wanted me to produce a record on her and her name was Patricia Conroy and uh, Patricia and I became very good friends. Uh, we went to Nashville and did some recording and over the years we worked together on two CDs. She even won um, Best Album of the Year for, ironically enough, an album called Bad Day for Trains and uh, Patricia's been out on the train with us and she's just a delight. And the Queen ate off these plates and used this silverware. The queen could have used this one right here. The one I'm, I'm looking at right now. The queen and we look alike, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> The U.S. train starts its tour in Scranton, Pennsylvania, heading out on the Northeast U.S. line through New York State and back into Canada, 
with shows in southern Ontario. Then we cross the border back into America and travel under the Great Lakes to Illinois. Can you hear that whistle blowing? Can you see those pretty lights? There's a train coming on a cold winter's night. Let's get down to the station. The band's gonna entertain. Rolling right across the country. Rocking on the holiday train. I've been a spreading. Hamilton, Enderlin, Edmonton, London, Carrington, Trenton, Binghamton, Marathon, Brandon, Nipigon, North Bend, Dillinson, Dryden, Cochran, Golden. From Chicago, the tour continues through the Midwest, into Wisconsin, Minnesota, North Dakota, and then our last day of shows in Saskatchewan. Whitby, Sudbury, Gurney, Lake City, Harvey, Tilly, Calgary, Port Henry, Fernie, Didsbury, Airdrie, Agassiz, Kanawaki, Port Moody, Bradenbury, Can Bannerbury. you hear that whistle blowing? Can you see those pretty lights? There's a train coming on a cold winter's night. Let's get down to the station. The band's gonna entertain. Rolling right across the country. Rocking on the holiday train. Moose Jaw, Oneyana, Wabatos, Minnedosa, Matawash, Wanaga, Kenora, Regina, Panola, Winona, it ain't far to Sparta, Ticonderoga, Saratoga, Mina, why not? Bonjour, mon nom est Michel Spanard du Chemin de Terre Canadien Pacifique. Je suis ici aujourd'hui pour vous raconter l'histoire du train des fêtes. The Canadian tour begins in Montreal, heading west through Ontario, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and into Alberta. Cobblestill, Belleville, Bowmanville, Notch Hill, Montreal, St. Paul, Whitehall, Smith Falls, Buffalo, Cottage Grove, Toronto, Loretto, Chapel, Luck Cole, Old Tay, let's yeah, those go! Those pretty lights are fading down the track as we all cheer. Well, they're off to see the next town, then we're back again next year. Helping out the hungry all across the land, bringing smiles, frowning faces. Gonna lend a helping hand, bringing smiles, frowning faces. Gonna lend a helping hand. From CPR headquarters in Calgary, we continue westward through the Rockies and the tour ends in Port Moody, British Columbia. Hello, Port Moody! Are you looking good? One of the people who works 18 hours a day on the train and takes care of us is our own Mrs. Claus, Linda Patterson. I've recently retired from Canadian Pacific, and uh, but I still really want to be involved with the holiday train because it's it's something that is, is very special to me. I love to help people and I love to have uh, the opportunity to go out into the various communities and see the reaction that people have towards Canadian Pacific. Uh, I worked for CP for a long time and I have a lot of pride in the company that I worked for. And this is um, the, one of the reasons why that I feel that the holiday train is something very positive and uh, that is needed in a lot of communities. I love to go over to see the, uh, the people that are collecting the food and seeing how much food and how much money they've collected and just, just to watch and see the reaction and the smiles on people's faces and see them joining in with the singing and it's just a, it's just a great feeling. We do have uh, CP employees and their families that come on board. Uh, oftentimes it's, it's used as a recognition for employees. Uh, other times in, in a town you might have a, a special hockey team that has done something or um, perhaps some special children that are, that are in the community that um, maybe can use a boost by the holiday train. They've often referred to the coach as the Polar Express. They get on the coach and wow, just like the Polar Express, and and that you know it makes all the work that you do so much more rewarding because you know somebody's really uh, appreciating and enjoying what you're doing, and it doesn't matter how long the hours are in a day, it just is a really good feeling. 
One of the highlights was being able to tour with the Moffats on the holiday train for a couple of years. We had so much fun hanging out and writing together. Here now is one of the songs written while on board. It's called Hang On. Tracy Brown is, is absolutely the most fantastic person you could ever want to be with. And last year we were even lucky enough to have her daughter with us. And that was just great. Like we're all one big happy family and it's, uh, it's a very special time. I don't think there's too many dry eyes when we leave, when we have to say goodbye. Life aboard the holiday train is one of the best experiences I've ever had as a performer. It's uh, not only a remarkable journey to take part of, but it's unlike any other tour I've ever done. Uh, we get to stay aboard a, a rumbling, rocking train, staying on the beautiful business cars for two to three weeks, and it's, it's a great way, it's a reflective way to really just sit back and watch the countryside roll by and also get a chance to visit so many communities. During our off time, uh, performers either spend time in their private rooms, in the sitting room, or in the dining rooms. Uh, there are two dining rooms to accommodate all CPR staff and cast and with a cook on board. And the dining rooms really become key uh, and very our central area of social activity um, before and between the shows and after the shows. This is how it's really unlike any other tour. We get to spend quality time as artists together, so it's really a, a, a unique tour to take part in. On the U.S. train, we've had the opportunity to tour with John Callan, who is an amazing vocalist. Uh, we were blown away by he and his uh, band of musicians who came on, and they just picked like crazy regardless of the weather, and these southern boys really put us to shame. They were all picking bluegrass out in uh, 20 below weather, and uh, just a remarkable group of entertainers. Kelly Prescott has proven to be a, a tremendous addition to the Holiday Train Tour. She's got uh, youthful enthusiasm and she does terrific performances and the audience seemed to just really enjoy seeing a young face up on the stage and she had, does this little cheer backstage as well to get us all pumped for the show so she's, uh, she's a great spirit to have along on the train. The Inna Sisters have been involved in many of the Holiday Train tours and, and they're simply some of the, the, the best people I've ever worked with. We've had a lot of fun sitting around the table with Maureen, Karen and Teresa playing games, singing and laughing so much and just having a riot. We're all just like family when we're on board and uh, they're, they're great musicians who give 100% every show and you know, Teresa's kind of the craziest one and um, as you can see, 
She's not uh, very humble at all. She's good. She's good. But she's not as good as me. And uh, and uh, I'm good, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm modest, all the same. You know, I don't brag, basically. As every artist who has taken part of the train can attest, it's it's one of the best they will ever experience. And uh, here's Maureen to tell you a little bit about how she feels about the tour. I think that this was, will probably be the greatest Christmas memory, uh, not just for us, but for a lot of the kids that came out to see us. And, uh, you know, this this was just wonderful. The tour can be cold and, and, and some days can be long when you've got five, six shows and that in that time but it's it's a really magical show to take part on when you see the faces of the audiences coming in and and all the good the train does it's a tour of smiles and tears and gratitude and team effort that is unequal to any i've ever seen we really have to thank the uh, canadian pacific railway police officers who travel with us and keep us safe on our journey and we've met so many great officers along the way including people like ian libby uh, Phil Wagner, Frank Blanford, and our next guest, Constable Dave Bogus. CPR police they are, a, uh, are a national police department, of course, uh, sworn in under the Canada Transportation Act, and as such, we we support CP Railway in the uh, in, in all its endeavors. The holiday train is a great opportunity for CPR police to get involved with communities, with people right across the country. We start our planning early in the year. Uh, you won't see any snow in the background here. It's still summertime and already we're talking about the holiday train. CPR police will put together an operational plan, involve all its members across the country. We'll go out and do site surveys uh, to check out where the holiday train plans to stop to make sure that it's a, a good and safe location, that people have plenty of safe uh, ground to stand on away from the tracks. There are places for parking. There are places hopefully for handicapped people to come in and. Uh, enjoy the festivities. So we get involved very early. This particular story was a few years ago and Beverly Mahood was one of the entertainers. There was a young uh, handicapped boy who was in a wheelchair and he was having trouble getting Beverly's attention. And eventually everyone else had left. Beverly was heading uh, off the train. He was quite disappointed. So I, I stopped Beverly and asked her and uh, if she would go over and talk to the young boy. Okay, yeah, I'll be down there in a second. And of course she did, because Beverly is a, uh, is a great person. She came back and talked to the young boy. He was, uh, he was so pleased, you could see it in his, in his face. He had a chance to talk to her. She, uh, she knelt down by the wheelchair, had a picture taken with him and uh, gave him a big hug. It certainly made his day. Well, there's a lot of challenges to uh, putting on a rolling fundraiser of this size and going right across the country. Uh, both in America and in Canada. I went to the draftsmen and the welders and the uh, planners and electricians at CPR and we worked on some very cool improvements. One of my favorites was the uh, flying grid system that we have now in the roof of the car. It actually can, uh, we need to be ambidextrous. There are shows on this side of the track, shows on that side of the track. So when the door is open, it can slide out that way or it can slide out this way. And um, what it does is it allows us to get a better lighting blend on the front of the entertainers and uh, it gives us our own stage monitors in a better position. We then uh, actually put metal boxes, mounted them way up in the corners of the box car, and uh, we put some line array speakers in there because our crowds are getting up to like, um, well, close to 10,000 in some places. And you need a lot of horsepower to get that music across like that, especially when you're playing live. And I mean, try playing live when it's freezing out there and the wind and the snow is blowing on you. It's hard to get the hot licks out, but uh, we work with great musicians and all of these improvements like spray foam insulation on the inside of the car. Uh, we mounted more heaters in the ceiling and it allows us to put on a great show. I mean, people are standing there out in the cold. They deserve to have a great live show. Another challenge uh, CPR presented us with is uh, how do you make the overall look of the train bigger, brighter, better every year? Um, initially, it started out with the older style analog Christmas bulbs all around the train. But uh, one of the, the problems there was uh, sometimes we'd have to change up to 100 bulbs at every stop, getting ladders out and trying to meet all safety requirements. I mean, CPR is very safety conscious and um, that was a challenge for us. So we went to uh, rope lighting and um, it basically the whole train is uh, miles of rope lighting all around it. 
This year we're using LED rope lighting and it gives it a real bright, rich look also. It's different than the older look and um, someday we may go back to that. But for now we're having a lot of fun, you know, designing new patterns and big snowflakes and there's leaping reindeer and stuff like that going on. We've got a great designer, Ross Bartlett, does our lighting stuff and has done a good job. And all the guys down at uh, St. Luke and at uh, Bensonville and in Calgary, they're all pitching in to make this thing work. Once the uh, various groups, such as the uh, Bensonville group in the United States, have completed their cars, the generator sets lighting, and also the Pavilion and the Alston groups have completed the stage car and the, and the business cars, all the cars are sent to the St. Luke Diesel shop in Montreal, and the trains are assembled. These guys behind the scene are, are who we like to call our unsung heroes. And uh, first of all, there's Kenny Post, who um, not only does the stage setups for both cars, but is the head tech and musical director on the US train, as well as handling backup vocals and percussion. Mike Norman is our musical director for the Canadian tour. He uh, keeps us laughing. It was a love train, Ooh, a loving train, a lot of loving going on. Wow, well, super loving. Ooh, a man and Ed Greenberg choo -choo. getting on down, choo -choo. Choo -choo -choo. loving all night choo -choo. Choo -choo. Choo -choo. Choo -choo. in a real special way. Steve Petrie uh, not only plays blazing solos, but he's always the first one to the door to open them up and get the whole show running. We've seen many dogs on the Holiday Train Tour and uh, we're happy to hear that the food banks provide pet food for our four-legged friends. Well, talk about uh, getting into the spirit of the season early. Um, we get to see thousands of kids all across the continent staring in amazement as we pull into town. Uh, we've got a cool rapping Santa that fires up the show and the kids are rocking to the tunes. Uh, this one little girl, though, captured everyone's attention. And it was the CP police that came over and said, come and look at this girl. So we got over there and she had unlimited moves. She was having the time of her life. She didn't care who was watching. She'd even played with the camera a little bit, and I thought, my God, I think she's maybe four, maybe three, four years old, and look at the fun she's having. For me, that is getting into the spirit of the season. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed your journey here on the holiday train. Happy holidays, and we'll see you next year. It's that time of the year when all the songs you hear make you smile and sing along and it seems like nothing's wrong Deck the halls, silent night All is merry, all is bright When we praise that baby boy and repeat the sounding joy